friends it's Liz here thank you for joining me today I am so excited about this video I have another one page wonder to share with you and I'm going to show you how to make one as well as you know the different ways that you can um, add things to it to make it a little different and um, I'll just walk you through the process I'm also going to show you my latest kit which I have used some of the pieces to put this together now, this was not my original idea. I saw this on Septeria 18's channel, a, oh my gosh, a while back, and I had, I had kind of saved it to, to show you all how to make one. So getting started, I've used some pieces from Simple Stories, just a couple here and there, but primarily it is my own um, digital kit. So um, I've just added little different types of ephemera, which again, I will show you in, um, in a little bit. So the first flip out has a little tuck spot in the corner and these are all my pieces that I'm showing you right now. In fact, the only pieces that I have from the Simple Stories collection, I will point them out in a few minutes, which is the um, love, uh, love, love on the little corner here and then just the um, couple of little items on this side. This is also from my latest collection and it goes really well with my Hugs XO, which I recently shared with you as well. Um, and I will just have all that linked below. Again, thank you all so much for your support. So the pieces, this one, this one, and the little heart are the only pieces I've used from the Simple Stories collection, plus a couple of pieces that were in the front there. So this one also is another ephemera piece from my latest collection. So everything I'm going to show you is my latest collection. The tag I made here is with my um, Hugs X01, which I released recently. And I just made a tag with those papers because basically that one is um, uh, journaling pages or uh, pages that you can use for ephemera, etc. So here I made a little pocket and a couple little tags and journaling cards. It says Happy Mail, which is also part of the kit. This one says Crafty Friends. And so then you've got a little flip out here where you've got additional places to add things. This one says love, love. And then bottom here with love it. It's also from the collection and the paper I used is from my past uh, hugs XO. I just added that in there. If you wanted to, you know, write your little note to your friend or your family member, it's a little hidden kind of envelope there. And then on this side, another little tuck spot. This one says happy mail, a journaling card. So you could send that, you know, with all your mail to your friends. And then this opens up and you've got another section to add more journaling space. I really love this little one page wonder. All you need is a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and I am using up almost every single piece of it. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. And then at the end, I'm also going to show you um, just a different way to make it and the way that um, Septeria 18 actually made it different. I'll show you how that looks as well. Um, and I will try and link her video below. I hope I remember where it was. Um, but like I said, I usually make something and then I write down who, um, who I saw it from and then I kind of stash it away to you know to show you and then of course I forget where um, when it was that I saw it etc but I really super love it I think you're going to have so much fun with it if you have double-sided paper it's even more amazing and of course you can make this vintage and any theme that you want all right my friends let me show you the kit quickly thank you again so much for your support if you like this style of video please leave a thumbs up don't forget to click that notification bell to know when i have another video coming up here i'm just showing you some of the ephemera pieces that are included in the kit there are over 30 pieces of ephemera in this um uh, little uh, digital kit that i'm going to show you so this kit has over 30 pieces of ephemera journaling cards as you can see here a little strip on the right that you could use as washi tape or borders etc then we have the next one that has more journaling cards and ephemera pieces i made it so that it kind of went really nicely with my hugs xo original kit and um, it's just really nice pieces of ephemera you can add in your snail mail to your friends um, and you know in your crafty projects and of course i made it um, very shabby so, sort of valentine theme as well to go with my last one 
and uh, as you can see here you've got lots of different uh, little ephemera pieces thank you all so much for your support with my shop um, the artists that i feature in my consignment shop also thank you we appreciate any purchase that you make because that helps us keep going um, it helps me keep making videos and sharing with all of you as well this are some of the pages from my original kit that i showed you recently and i also have lots of projects lots of tutorials and lots of ideas on what you can use them for all right my friends let's get started with the tutorial okay so you take your 12 by 12 paper I'm using single sided so that you can see where my score lines are going to be and I made sure to use a paper that is non-directional so I could use it in any direction so the first score line is at two and three quarters the next one is at six and a quarter then six and a half and then the last one is at ten and a half on this side here and then we turn it left once and you score at two inches and then at seven and a half inches and that's it for our score lines so you'll see you have a few sections one of them in the center has a little bit of a gusset that we will be folding as well or um, just you know a little bit of extra space and now i've learned that um, when you're folding your score lines you should be folding them um, the opposite way of where you scored them i think that's what i'm trying to say so um, i was scoring them on the white side of the page so i'm folding towards the pattern side of the page this way it keeps your paper from ripping when you're doing your folds now this paper that i'm using happens to be from one of those michael's recollections paper pads and it's quite thin actually so um, you have to be very careful with this type of paper if you're using something a little bit thicker like um, the tim holtz paper or the other kind of um, designer paper then you you've got a little bit more room to um, to be able to fold things and they're not going to tear as easily now i'm just showing you here i'm folding all my lines i start first like i said towards my pattern and then I'm going to fold um, the opposite direction, so towards the white side that I actually scored, because for this type of project, I like to make sure that my score lines can bend either way, just to keep everything from tearing and, you know, kind of um, giving you strange little edges here and there. Now you'll notice that there's just quite a few sections that come out after we've done our score lines. We will be cutting a few things just to you know give us the shape that we're looking for but also every little piece that I cut off I'm going to use so I'm going to show you how that is um, I really like doing this whenever I can like I said my project is um, a slightly different than how Septeria 18 did it um, but uh, I will let you know what the difference was okay so now we're at the top we have this tiny little rectangle and then below it we have this longer little rectangle so we're going to cut those off so it's the top right corner where the smallest little rectangle is we will be cutting that one off and I'm making sure that I'm going over my score line towards the side that I'm leaving on the page okay this way it gives me a kind of like a, a cleaner edge when I'm folding now the bottom right we're going to take this completely off and like I said keep all those pieces because I will be using every single one and you'll see what I mean in a minute so again I'm cutting on the inside line of the score line so towards the actual page that the paper that is staying so these bottom two first cut we're going to do is at the score line and I'll go on either side of that score line and take off that little section. So see there's this little section. I'm going to cut again on the other side of the score line and then take that completely off. Now this piece we won't be using um, unless you want to, but it's just a tiny little piece that, um, that we don't really need. I do keep these strips though. Um, I collage with them, so I don't know. I, th I might be keeping too many, but I'm keeping them. And then this section here, again, I'm just cutting on either side of that score line, just to give me a little room. 
when I fold things up and then when you're gluing everything on and then you're folding it, you need to have a little bit of that space. And I find that if you cut on either side of that score line, then it gives you that little like eighth of an inch space to fold things. Okay, so you can see how it's looking here. Now these top two parts, the top two sections, up to that score line, we will be cutting that off as well. And here I'm going below my score line. And then going right through to that second score line and taking that off. Again, I'm going on the inside of this score line and then taking that off completely. And again, keep this section. We will be using these three little pieces that we have so far. Now, this is where um, I guess I like to round off my edges, but you can start to see how this is taking shape. So I'm just going to round my corners here because I find that it's just, it gives it a nicer look um, and it's not like those sharp edges that are left over on your page after you've done the cuts. So I'm just do doing the side flap and then the top flap here, which will become our envelope. And I like these type of projects because once you kind of have all the lines cut and you know, all the shape showing, then this is where you can play with it and make it your own, which is what I ended up doing with this one. So now you can see when I fold everything in, it tucks nicely inside this little looking envelope. Okay, so knowing that we've got a few pieces to work with and you know we've got this little flap here, I think I'll start with this end to show you. And what I'm doing is I'm just folding the top right corner towards the end here of the left side, making like a little triangle. Now I'm using that as my guideline. And now this, um, I'm just folding it um, on the opposite direction again, and then this way it just gives me a cleaner cut when I'm cutting through it. Now I could leave that tucked in for reinforcing that little spot, but I don't need to. I could, I could uh, fold it this way and have a little tuck spot on the inside here. But for this project, I'm just going to show you um, what I did. I just cut off that little like rectangle, triangle, oh my goodness, triangle. So cut that off and then this becomes a little area where you can tuck something. The next spot is where again, you can play with it, but I'm just going to fold um, about, I would say like an inch, inch and a half towards the bottom here. And this is just to give me a guideline how I want my pocket, like how deep I want that pocket to be, or how tall I should say. And again, I'm just folding it over onto itself here. And then I'll be cutting this section off. And like I said, keep all those pieces that we're cutting because we will be using them. So now we've got that little section there. And then this is where um, you kind of start to look at your pieces and decide what you want to do with them. So for example, this one here, I think it's just going to be a little area to um, tuck something in. This one here, I think we'll be using it for our hinges. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold it in half and you can use your scoreboard if you want to do this and not eyeball it like I'm doing it. But I'm just folding that long strip in half and this is just one of the sections we had left from what we had cut from what you see there. Okay, this is just uh, one of the sections we had. And I'll be cutting this in half. And like I said, I like the fact that this will become um, useful in the project itself. I'll fold it in half again and now you can see that I'm making hinges and um, this is a, a nice way of reusing this piece because it of course matches what we're doing and it's not an extra piece that I had to you know grab from anywhere. You could certainly use something else for a hinge and then use um, this piece that we just cut up maybe as a belly band or as an additional pocket but like I said this is such a versatile um, project that you can just do so much with it and you know just get your creativity going and you know do things that you want with it. So 
because these are going to be the hinges for this large section here, I'm just cutting off like a hairline basically of paper um, because once I start to add my hinges, it's going to make it a little bit, um, I guess, uh, deeper on the page. And then when I'm folding my uh, flap over, it will probably get in the way. So um, that's why I wanted to do that there. And now here I could straighten this out, but I'm not going to because this hinge itself is going to sort of blend in the cuts if I didn't make them straight. So I'm grabbing the first hinge here and I'm just showing you, this is just how quickly you can measure it. I'm tucking it inside the pocket and then I have like a tiny little bit left over on the top. So I'm just taking that off and I'll be doing that with both hinges so that when I'm actually gluing them onto the page, I don't have that extra little you know, piece hanging out from the top of the pocket. Now you can see I have two little hinges that I'm working with. Now I'm going to glue one to the left side of the uh, pocket. And I, I like to attach it first to the page and then um, kind of move my pocket towards it. And the pocket itself will kind of push it up slightly into the position it needs to go. So I've just attached it to the page and now I've moved my little pocket to the top and notice I've only got glue on the part I'm attaching to the page right now. I'm doing the same thing on the other side and make sure that your hinges are opening towards the inside of your pocket and not the outside. And then again, I'm making sure that it fits and that it lines up so that it doesn't get in the way of my flap. And now that I know it's uh, it's where they need to be, I'm just going to quickly give them a nice score line again. And then making sure that I didn't move them too much. And then I'm going to glue them. So now this is the section before you glue, if you wanted to attach some sort of um, a piece to the pocket to close it like if you were using um, a brad or something you would do that first before you glue your pocket on but I'm not going to do that so I'm just going to glue it right on because initially I had thought I was going to use velcro but then I thought not everyone has velcro so I'll have to figure out a way to close it that it's not you know too um, too difficult so I'm just waiting for that to glue and then of course I'm looking through my pieces to see where I want to add them. So I think I'm going to add this little piece that's left here from our first pocket that we cut and I'll just make a little area to tuck something in. So I'm just putting it right on this corner and so now I've got an additional little section, a little pocket on top of that pocket that we made. And then we've got the three little pieces left. So for this pocket here, I'm just going to add glue to one side because I want this to be a, a section where you can, um, you know, put something in, but it's not necessarily going to be um, uh, stuck in there like a pocket. You can slide it in from one side. And then on this section here, I'm trying to decide if I wanted to do hinges for that pocket or um, if I'm moving on to the next section. So I think I'm moving on to the next section. And this little piece here, just showing you again, there's a pocket there and the little tuck section here and then the large pocket there. Um, this section here already has a fold to it and then it's got like a little hinge from our original score lines and everything that we did. So now this can become a little area where you can um, either take that completely off or attach it as using it as a hinge, which is what I'm going to do. And so of course with the little hinge, this section can flip to the right or left depending on which way you position it. And then this can become a little pocket on the top or on the side where you see this white part here. But I think what I'll do is I'll flip the white um, part towards the inside of my pocket um, because in this way it's a nicer clean line like I'll flip it this way and then you'll see this before you flip it over to the side and have your little pocket and then instead of making a tuck spot here that's just going to be on the inside 
and that's what I'm going to do. So of course I've got to make my little pocket section so make sure that you are gluing it where your pocket is going to be um, depending on how your hinge is going to be attached. So I'm adding glue to the left and bottom and then I'm just going to bring it together. So now I've got a pocket on the top and then I'm adding the hinge and just gluing that little hinge portion onto the page or onto the pocket I should say. And so now I have a little flip out pocket on this, uh, the front of this pocket page. And then this section, I'm going to just use it as another little area to slide something in. So I'm just going to add glue to two parts of it, like two sections of it. So in an L shape. And then when I add this down, it's going to be my little area to just tuck a large journaling card in maybe. So this will flip down. Now these ones here, I think I'm just going to glue them down. You could go ahead and add, um, you know, other hinges maybe with some scrap paper that you have. But for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to glue them down and make a large pocket in the center there. And then this tiny little piece we have left, just showing you again where all our little sections are, just so that you remember we've got many, many pockets going at this point. A little tuck section there. And then this is where I'm going to put my little journaling card to hold my flap closed. So now I'm going to add this next little tiny piece we have left, and I'll make another little pocket on this side. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial, my friends. Thank you again for joining me. I will have some photos um, at the end of the video just so you can see things a little bit up close. Um, remember to check out my other tutorials, my other One Page Wonders. I'm really enjoying um, showing these to you and um, putting these tutorials together. I'm going to quickly show you um, a different way that you can add pockets to this little folio, um, like the original one I saw. So this was the original one that I saw um, Septeria 18 make. There's like a little hinged pocket on the left and then she did a hinged, uh, the same hinged pocket in the center. And then here she did like a flip out and added like a little envelope to the flip, but made this a pocket in the center. So as you can see, I made mine a little bit different, but this was her original uh, design. She also did add a little belly band to the left pocket here with uh, some of the leftover paper as well. Um, but of course, if you wanted to do it this way, you could just add the hinges to your pocket instead of making it a fold out like I did, like a folio style. So like I said, this is such a fun project. So I hope you have fun putting one together and please tag me if you do make one. I would love to see what you have made. And um, thank you so much for joining me today.